This is Larry William back at stockcharts.com because I think we might see a little lower price in the stock market and then up, up, up. Whoa, and away. Well, why do I think that? A lot of things I want to share with you today about inflation, stocks, and a view of the future. You know, inflation has been the driving force this year. But I want to really give you the background ground on inflation. Things are not quite what it seems. In fact, maybe there's a little fake news out there. The recent headline, inflation eases as consumer prices rise 6.3% in July. Wow, everything's up 6.3%. Uh, but we read that consumer prices rose in July from a year earlier after posting an annual increase of 6.8. So actually, the inflation rate actually declined. It didn't go up. And what's really interesting when you look at that, the Federal Reserve looked at the PCE index, not the commerce the price index. They have a different index. Um, the traditional CPI index looked at how consumers adjust to rising prices because they'll buy something cheaper. They'll buy maybe a generic brand instead of a Pillsbury, whatever. So and I want to talk about this because it's a big difference because it is what's going to happen in the future. This is where I live. This is where you should live in the future. We're going to study the past, but really to be a good speculator, you have to be living out there in the future a month or so from now. Well, if we look at the personal consumption index, which is what the Federal Reserve looks at, that's the blue line. It's not quite the same as the CPI index and red line. This is the index, the blue, that the Federal Reserve makes all of their actions on. So we probably need to look at that in a little depth. Well, look at this from 1960 forward. One thing for sure, when we have recessions, those are the gray lines. Remember that? Not much happens. Huh? But for sure, inflation is here to stay. Look at that from 1960 forward. The trend of inflation is up. Inflation is not going to go away. So we have to really understand when it turns up, when it turns down, and why and how. And that's what today's performance is about. And if we do a little blow up on this, we see in from 2004, again, almost a straight line going up. And look what happened in 2008. Remember the big recession that we had, the big stock market decline? Actually, the PCE index topped out after the recession began. And of course, the one or two month recession that we saw in 2020, the inflation rate dipped and immediately came right back, right on about on trajectory of where it's been. So it's really interesting if we look at it a little different way, if we look at the annual percentage change, and that's what I really want to look at, because if we're looking at how much we change now versus 12 months ago, uh, 12 months ago, we could have been in a very low figure as we were down here in 2020, right? So any increase shows a huge increase in inflation but it's actually caused not so much by what's happening today as the numbers we're subtracting from. Also notice that as we end recessions, inflation starts to pick up again. I'll get back to that in a moment. Now, here's the big thing. If we look at these inflation numbers, and if we look at a couple of months ago, we were subtracting that number a long time ago in 2020. So it was a huge uh, rate of change of inflation. But now if we're subtracting now from 12 months ago, it's not nearly as much. So the rate at which we're changing is actually decreasing. People just don't recognize that yet. If we look at it on a different basis, a compounded annual rate of change, well, look at that. Uh, there hasn't been much change at all. So this inflation bugaboo, I think has been overstated. Is it there? Oh, clearly it's there. I shop, yes, I see higher prices, I know that but is it as bad as we think it is? I don't think so. And I think it'll be going down and here's why. Here's our current rate where we've been, right? We're, we've been subtracting these numbers back here. If you go back 12 months ago, we're subtracting these numbers, but soon we're gonna be in a month, we'll be subtracting these numbers at higher levels. So when you subtract low numbers, you automatically get a big increase, but we are now entering this area where prices have increased and we're going to start comparing versus 12 months ago, which means the rate of change. The rate of change is not exactly inflation. Inflation prices aren't up 8% from, from some time period. They're up from 12 months ago. That's the rate of change that everybody is focused on that has been driving stock prices. And the rate of change, as you can see, just because mathematically, 
uh, we're going to be subtracting not these numbers, but larger numbers, it will be going down. Printing money, is that the cause of inflation? Could be. A lot of people have said that. I used to think so, in fact. But if we look at the data on that, wow, wait to see what I have to show you. And not only that, there's some blockbuster data I'm going to show you coming up on some specific trades coming up. And what I think is the real driving cause of inflation, which I was, I was shocked when I found this out. I think you would be as well. So uh, is it, oh, first of all, though, stay tuned because chart con 2020 stockchart.com is bring a bunch of us into seattle we're going to do a special presentation for you in october a little bit more on that later as well okay so here we are cpi that's inflation is the black line and money supply is in red now conventionally you would think when money supply increases red line goes way up we should inflate we didn't in 1998 again we saw deflation actually or it, the rate of change of inflation went down in 2001, 2002, and money supply increased rapidly. Hmm, that's not quite what we thought the world, the way the world worked. A big increase in money supply from 2005 all the way into the middle of 2009, after almost the end of 2009, and we did get some increase in inflation. And then when money supply came down, but hold on, look at this. Interest or uh, inflation started to decline prior to money supply declining. So the relationship that we thought was there, even in the Jimmy Carter era, we're going now all the way back to 1966, 67, we had a big increase in inflation in 73, 74. But look at money supply was actually down. And then money supply came up a lot. And look at what happened in CPI, it was actually down. So this idea that money, uh, the amount of money in circulation drives inflation, uh, is not in the data. Now here we are, we come to where we are right now. Again, we see uh, inflation in black and money supply in red. And there's been an increase in money supply. And yeah, we got a little increase in inflation. We certainly did here recently. And this may be the good news. Look what happens if we do a forecast out, money supply comes down which would suggest that inflation is going to come down, which, as I'm going to show you in a moment, would be very bullish for the stock market. And speaking of the stock market, here it is. This is the thing that just blew me away. Look how closely the stock market parallels. The stock market is in red here. How closely the stock market parallels the black line inflation. It just there it is. Look how closely they follow one another. Uh, again, we see this in 2001, inflation comes down, stock market comes down, stock market goes up, inflation goes up, stock market comes down, inflation goes down. Oh my gosh, what's going on here? Uh, and again, a longer term view from 2009, there it is, stock went down, inflation went down, stocks go up, inflation goes up, stocks dip, inflation dip, stocks rally, oh, the big crash we saw in 2020, the, the COVID crash, if you would. Stocks went down, inflation went down, and they both rallied together. They're almost hand in glove, aren't they? Well, hold on. This is what's really happening. And this is a blow up of where we've been. So you can see again how tight that relationship is. But that relationship is based on, hold on to your popcorn, the stock market in red pushed forward about eight months. In other words, the best predictor of inflation looks to me like it's the stock market. Yeah, hold on to your popcorn. What's going on here? Look how closely we saw that relationship in all the prior charts. You can go back and review this on YouTube. And it's a really tight relationship. In other words, the decline in the stock market is going to help us see uh, less inflation. It seems to be one of the very best predictors of inflation. And I think that's just wildly bullish because if we're going to start to decline here, we're going to see a lot better opportunities in the stock market that will be bullish. So watch that one closely. So this is really shocking news to me. If we had it all wrong, stocks predict inflation, not the other way around. Now for the data, just so you know, I'm using the Dow versus a three month annualized percent change of the sticky price index. That's also another inflationary index that the Fed follows. So that's the data that I'm using for you data people. I like to see exactly 
what's going on. There it is. That's what it is. There's also a cycle to inflation. We've talked about that a lot here in stockdark.com this year. You know, my cycle for inflation says we start to go down. And after we have the last month we went down, I think the next reporting period, we'll see it go down again. And these peaks and, in, and inflation can be significant. So what drives stock market prices? Oh, this is really important to us. Uh, what really is the big, strong influence to prices? Can we narrow that down a bit? I think we can, and let me show you how. First of all, do interest rates matter? We're looking at the 10-year constant maturity rate here. And a couple of interesting points. Look at the recessions again, or the gray lines. And interest rates have been going up when we get into the gray line, for the most part. Well, currently, they're going down. Now, we can get into a negative zone, which some people think has been bearish, and sometimes it seems to be, and sometimes it isn't. So if we start to look at the relationship, I'm going to look at the 10-year, three-month maturity yield, but inverted, turned upside down. Look what I see. Look how closely the stock market follows that inverted yield. There was a crash of 2009. And this seems to be the big takeaway. When this yield bottom and starts to come up, come up, it forecasts stocks will do that. When we're getting a low in yields and they start to come up, stocks later on rally. Think seeing the same thing over here. Again, we see the same thing over here. And then uh, 2017, this huge rally in the stock market caught a lot of people by surprise, including me. But once those rates started to go back to the upside, oh my gosh, look at that. Away went the stock market. So this index that you've been looking at has actually shifted forward in time to give us a forecast. And notice these turn ups and prices rally, turn ups, prices rally. We have a turn up and we know that six months in advance. The two rallies that we saw this year, look at that. We had a turn up known six months in advance and look where we are right here, right now. We have had a big turn up in this index, the 10 year, three month maturity inverted as we saw back here, we saw over here, we saw here, we saw here. It looks to me like the yield relationship for the stock market is now turned bullish. It's in the process of saying we should see a significant intermediate term low in the market. So we might go down a little bit, but it looks to me like up, up, and away. I've blown this up so you can see it a little bit closer. You can see again the relationships when this yield red line starts to turn up, what happens. And that's remember, these points are known prior to it happening. Like we know now, we've known this for some time. This appears to be the general roadmap. Will it be this extreme? No, I don't think so. But is the bias to the long side? That's what's important. Yes, it looks like based on interest rates, there's a really bullish bias coming into the stock market right here, right now. There's also a trade coming up here real soon. I want to call to your attention. I think you're going to like this a lot. This is the short-term trade, um, but it's been a really powerful one. So let's look at it. If we look at my seasonal indicator in stockdrafts.com, which is what we're looking at right now, we see that the seasonal pattern in September, here's September and here's October, we usually have a little dip, a rally, and then we start to come down the last few trading sessions in October. Now, is that significant? Well, yes, it can be significant. Let's take a look at that. But we know we have a bias. We usually see in the past, stocks have usually declined somewhere around the middle of September. That's what we would expect to happen this year. How significant is this pattern? Does it happen often? Let me show you. If we were to sell on the 12th trading day of September, that's the S&P 500, the S&P E-mini contract. We're going to use a $2,200 stop loss. Not all these trades work. We're going to hold this for two days and then look for the first profitable opening to exit the trade. That's our entry, just real simple, buy on the 12th trading day or sell. I saw that buy sell on the 12th trading day of September. We're going to we could have a $2,200 stop loss. After two days, we're going to look for our first profitable opening to get out. In the last 24 years, that trade has been successful. It's made $18,950.91 cents. 
That's right, 91% of those trades were profitable. In fact, look what starts to happen around the end of September, trading day 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Look at all that in the last couple of days as well, again, with 91% accuracy. So what do we see here? We see there's a huge bias in the market in September for prices to go down, not to go up. And of course, we saw that visually here. This is what usually happens. So the latter part of this month, what do I think? I think short-term traders want to focus and look for selling opportunities for a decline of some sort at the end of this month. So get ready. Because again, we're living in the future, right? We're already looking at the end of September because we do live in the future. Now, how long do you want to hold that? We can test actually if you hold it for four sessions instead of just two, your profits go up to $20,000. Your accuracy dips to 87%. So you see the accuracy isn't quite as good if we just get out as soon as we can. First profitable opening, we're actually 95% accurate in the last 24 years. And we don't make as much money. So you as a trader have to balance out your accuracy versus your risk reward. But clearly we see we don't want to hold it eight or nine days because we start to lose money, don't we? The most highest accuracy comes getting in and getting out as soon as you've got a profitable opening. If you can hold it a little bit longer, maybe a trailing stop, that's what you'd want to do to maximize your profits. $4,000 more profits here than here. Okay, what should our stop be? Well, we can test all these stops. I've tested all the stops and see like, here's a maximum profit Notice we have a real close stop. Uh, we don't make as much money. Our accuracy is 62%. If we have a really big stock stop, our accuracy is high, but because we're losing a lot of money when we lose, we, our profits go way down. The ideal stop is in that $2,100, $2,200 area. So that's about the area of where you should keep your stop loss, somewhere in that area, okay? So now you understand how long we should hold this and what our optimal stop can be. If we wanted to get maximized accuracy, you might want to do that. We can maximize the accuracy in it. Um, but again, holding it as we see four or five, six days, our accuracy stops to decline. So the quicker you get out of it, the higher your accuracy will be. It looks like three, four days. That's where the most dollars have been made, not the most accuracy though. Just keep that in mind, depending on how short of a short-term trader you are. And again, remember, we're living in the future now. We're looking into the end of September, and this is the very first of September. And that's really where I want you to live. I want you to be thinking out in the future. I wish I live in a place like that. Wouldn't that be wild? Wow. Maybe someday people will, who knows? Huh? So let's look at this pattern so I can drive this home to you. This was a pattern in 2021, just last year. There's a 12th trading day of September left. Oh what happened. Now we go to 2020. There's a 12th trading day of September left. Look what happened. Hmm. And here we are in 2019. There's a 12th trading day of September. And uh, what took place? Yeah, you see, and this time we got a really significant decline to the downside. Wow, a big decline. So this end of September sell doesn't tell us the magnitude, but it clearly sets up some opportunities, as you can see. On the downside, there's been a strong bias there. Of course, we've only looked at a couple of years. So let's look at 2018. Oh, we're one day from the high closing. If it's actually this trade, we would have been stopped out the next day. No, we got out over here. I stopped, didn't get quite stopped out. We exited over here with our first profitable opening. But again, you can see this area, time-wise, is an area when you want to be looking for sell signals in the stock market, in the S&P 500 in the triple Qs, in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Okay, here we go to 2017. There it is again. Boom, the market just runs into something on the 12th trading day left. Has immediate decline. It did go higher this year. It didn't crash like it usually does, but was there a trading opportunity? Oh, yeah, you bet. Big range moved to the downside. Something's going on. Something's going on at the end of September every year. Here we see again, there was a trade that, we had already declined and started to decline again, stopped out of this trade. They're not all winners. That's why we need to use a stop loss. Well, this one could not have been any more perfect. In 2015, the absolute day of the high before the big crash roll in the marketplace, look what happened. There it was, boom, boom. 
and to the downside prices went. Pretty amazing how strong this has been. Now, this is not the first time I've talked about this. We talked about this last year on stockchart.com. This is a trade I've been following for about 11 years now. So this has been really in my life uh, out of sample. Here we are, 2014, 12 trading day left. Look what happens. The strong influence, something going on, some cosmic thing is happening. There it is in 2013. Look at that. Yeah, see how we can live in the future, can't we? We can actually see things um, now developing uh, into the future, which is really what we need to think about. You know, most people read the newspapers about what happened yesterday. What happened yesterday doesn't mean very much. It doesn't help us make money tomorrow. That's why we have to be thinking about the future, not just today and not what happened. We have to be thinking about what's going to happen. That's when we become a real speculator. Here we are in 2012, market runs up, 12 days left in September and down it comes again. Well, you can use stockcharts.com for this. This is gonna find this helpful as well. Here's my true seasonal pattern, stockcharts.com. Here's where we are right here, right now. We expect a little bit of a bounce coming in the marketplace. Then we come into that end of September trading pattern. So those of you who are using stockcharts.com, you can put my true seasonal indicator up there, which is the only one that really works because it allows you to do serious research. And you can see, as we get into the end of September, there it is, a trading opportunity developing for us. So get ready for that. What happens when inflation uh, abates? We talked a little bit about that. The red line of the CPI, well, notice when inflation starts to come down, whoa, stocks go up. Inflation starts to come down. It was in 1970, stocks went up. In 1974, 75, inflation came down. You can see what happened to stocks. In uh, 1980, inflation came down, stocks went up. In uh, 1990s, inflation came down, stocks went up. We were at a big crash in 2008, and inflation actually started to come down prior to the market low, and, and prices went up. So it seems like there's some predictive quality. When inflation comes down, prices will go up in the future. That seems to be what's going on uh, in the relationship between inflation, the most significant thing, it looks like not just the direction or the absolute number, but these turns in inflation. And this is where we are now. As you know, I believe we're going to see the red line come down further here, which would be comparable to this or this, which suggests higher prices coming in the future. Inflation comes down, you can expect higher prices, higher stock prices in the future. That's where we are now. So I could be wrong. I don't think I will be, and I could be. So we need to watch this carefully. If you start to see inflation come down this next month, reporting figure, well, then we're pretty well locked in. We turn the corner here, and that would be one reason to be quite bullish on the stock market. Uh, these charts are done, by the way, using Timing Solutions software for cycles in the intermarket charts. And I want to acknowledge Timing Solutions for that. It's a unique software that I do use. And people always ask, how do you do that stuff? It's in that software. Oh, I love this ad. I remember this ad when I was a kid. They laughed when I sat down to play the piano. Well, people laugh when I sit down to make market forecasts. I've done people, oh, you can't forecast the market. Huh? You can forecast it. Anybody can forecast it, but can you be correct? Can you be accurate? Well, here's the last stockchart.com forecast that we did. We said we should start to rally up and start to come down in September and set up an October low. Well, we did continue rallying. We, as you know, we rallied up here and we started to pull back into this area now. So yeah, we can get a pretty good idea of the future. And this is what I think is coming up. This is a very long-term cycle forecast of the market right around the 1st of October, it looks like we should start to go up, up and away. Remember, this was the forecast we started to see down that was done 1st of August with actually what's happening now. I think this is the next significant move to the upside starting around October. Of course, we can look at my 2022 annual forecast report. The blue line also looks in the future. It sees things in the future. And what does it see? This decline started to come in, but around October, the 
first part of October, oh, we've got to start thinking and getting quite bullish on the market. Uh, this is a strong pattern we've seen uh, for a long time period of the market. Most people know usually prices rally in October, not always, however, uh, but certainly this year, given what we've seen with interest rate charts that I showed you, remember those? With the inflation turning down chart that I showed you, remember those? It looks like it's time for us to start to think pretty seriously about getting long. Actually, we have seen this pattern before. If we go back to 1913, the red line is exactly what happened, the same price pattern in 1913. Look how closely this year, black has followed exactly what happened in 1913. And what took place in 1913? Well, on about this time frame, the prices went off to the upside. Yeah, very interesting. These price analogs usually work, not always. I've done some a lot of work with these this year to try to make them better. I think I've finally figured out how we can do that. So there's one price analog for you to consider. A tip for stockcharts.com people, here's our valuation index. And notice we've just become undervalued in the market. When we're undervalued in the market, look what happens. We usually see rallies. So that September sell coming up, you'd like to see overvaluation reading. And then once we have the overvaluation reading, we're going to want to look for an undervalued rating at some time the end of September, 1st of October, to really confirm the cyclical up move that I think is coming. Well, here's another pattern that we've seen before. This was from, believe it or not, 1891. Look how similar the red line from back in 1891 is to what's happened this year. And again, what do we see? This pattern also suggests about the end of September, the 1st of October, we do start to move to the upside. So when we look at the significant patterns in the market, and I think these are significant, when you look at the cycles, that, and they're totally different data, we see a low coming up in October. We see it from my forecast report coming up in October. We see it from the 1913 algorithm coming up in October. Uh, it's, hopefully we'll get undervalued again in October. Or we look at the 1891 pattern in October. And I think we have to conclude that we probably have an opportunity coming on the long side. Now this one gets really interesting because on October 7th through the 8th, we'll have ChartCon. That's where a, a lot of speakers will come for. Uh, stockcharts.com to Seattle. We're going to do a lot of presentations for you. They'll be online. You can get them on your computer. So coming to a computer near you right about that time of the market bottom. So wow, you want to really get ready to mark that date on your calendar. I'm certain you'll be hearing more about it. Uh, I'll be there. I'm looking forward to making a, what I think is going to be a very exciting presentation there. But for now, it certainly looks like we can go up, up and away. So if we're going to go up, up and away, where am I going? Do you have any idea where I'm going? I'm going back to the future. Goodbye. Yeah, back to the future. That's where you should live. That's where we live. And I hopefully today you've seen a bit of it. This is Larry Williams, IReallyTrade.com, wishing you good luck and good trading. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.